Well, today we have a chassis that I have not been able to feature on the channel yet. And actually, in all honesty, I've never even worked on one. Never seen one, never worked on one. So this will be a new experience for all of us. So this is a 25 inch Neotech S500. And this came out of a Pac-Man Galaga 20th reunion cabinet. And you can see here, S500. So what's happening here is this was sent to me because it apparently is dead. It's got no neck glow. Uh, it's not ticking. I was told in the message that was sent to me that this is has no signs of life. It doesn't do anything. So I thought, that's very odd. You know, only thing you'd have that what might cause that would be no power to the chassis or a bad fuse, but the fuse is good. And just so we can demonstrate here, I'll show you. We'll go to continuity mode, we'll touch the fuse. No problem there. So in an effort to uh, not have so such a long video all the time, I went ahead and did a little preliminary testing and I didn't see anything wrong with, uh, there's no solder bridges or bad rework, all the caps are original, it appears to be all original. So I thought, okay, let's start with the the uh, light bulb test. And in doing so, I noticed that the B plus pot is basically pretty much maxed out. And I don't know why it would be that way. If we look here, this is the B plus pot and it's like a 75% all the way up. If I turn it this way, let's go like so. Boom, there's a hundred. Focus on the pot, dude. So 75, 100. So right there is where it was. I never touched it. That's how it came in, about 75%. And that's, gonna, that's way too high. It shouldn't be that high. Um, so I think that's a problem there. But I began with the light bulb test. Now, I have no idea what to lift out of this chassis to really do the light bulb test. I don't know how to isolate the power supply from the rest of it. So if you're ever in that situation, the easiest thing to do is just remove the HOT. So I have removed the HOT. The HOT checks fine. We can put this on diode mode and center leg is negative and we should have 0.5 to I believe just one side. Yeah, 0.468. Okay, 0.453. So certain HOTs are different than the others. But um, this one is not shorted. So I'm not 100% positive if we should have a, re a reading to both legs, but we're going to assume that that's okay for now. So what you can do, if you don't know how to isolate the power supply from the main board, or the, actually the, the output side, uh, just remove the HOT. And what you can do is you can go to the collector. Collector? Yes. You can go to the collector of the HOT and do the light bulb test by removing the HOT, it, it eliminates the output to the high voltage side. So what you can do is if you don't know how to isolate the power supply from the main rest of the main board, remove the HOT and just do your light bulb test at the uh, collector of the HOT. Get rid of my... So if we go to the HOT, you've got the center pin is the collector. So we got the base is right here, emitter is over here, and this is the collector. So what you would do in this case is you'd put your meter here to read your, your B plus coming from the power supply and then put your load on that lead as well. So I'll try and do a demonstration here. So this is the easiest way to do the light bulb test if you don't know how to isolate the power supply from the rest of the chassis. So let's we'll see if we can kind of precariously do this here. And we have determined in a previous video that this is almost a perfect analog to the load that's uh, present when you're having this on a CRT. And we can adjust our B plus accordingly using this light bulb. So you just clip on one lead to the frame to ground and your other lead is gonna go just uh, figure out how to get this to stay on here. Okay, that's better. So then all you do is you power it up. It's not going to do anything because you don't have the output to the high voltage side and the flyback by having the HOT out and just touch the collector right th like that and the light bulb should light up. Um, this is just an easier way to do it if you're not sure how to isolate the power supply. I don't know. I keep saying that, but you know, you get the idea. So we're going to have to figure out a way to measure the B plus at the same time. So we can get a alligator clip here and clip this onto here also. 
actually let's just let's go to the other screw over there okay now uh, we can take our meter go to volts DC and we can kind of clip this onto here and then just basically touch uh, I don't want to touch something I shouldn't so hang on a second um, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this okay we'll hold this together then we can just touch the collector of the HOT like so and that will light the light bulb and give us a reading so all right let's plug in power the only kind of precarious thing about this is that if I need to adjust the B plus not sure how I'm gonna be able to do that now also I did some research and I can't find any documentation on what the B plus is supposed to be set to on the S500 there's documentation of the 2700 2701 2702 25 2515C 2500 uh, but I cannot find anything on what the B plus is supposed to be set to for the S500 so I'm just going to go off the assumption that because this is a 25 inch standard res monitor that I'm going to put it to 125 because all the other ones are 125 so we're hoping to see it somewhere around 125 but it's I don't imagine it's going to be because that pot is almost maxed out so okay um, I was told this was dead with no high voltage and no net glow so I'm curious to see if we hear anything when I turn this on uh, all right so here we go one two three okay I heard a, a chirp from the power supply indicating that it has turned on so I'm going to touch the collector of our HOT and hopefully the light bulb will light up and we'll get around 125 so here we go let's see if I can show this from a different angle so we can actually see here all right here we go one two three hey look at that it works and we're getting 122.8 so our power supply is working I can hear a relay click can you hear that listen oh hold on oh, maybe not I thought I heard a relay clicking when that was going on but anyway so we're at 122 uh, all right so I'm going to leave this on here and then turn it off and the light bulb should should discharge any of the capacitors there we go so now we have no charge we can work on this so let me see if I can do this while I adjust B plus so this may be I'm gonna turn it back on okay it's back on and let's see if I can do this while I'm adjusting B plus here um, that's gonna come through to here 122 126 I know you can't see it but 125.1 okay so I adjusted the B plus and we are at 125.1 so right on 125 okay now let's turn it off and discharge it okay okay so the power supply appears to be functional so I guess what we'll do we have our B plus set properly now let's uh, or close enough because it may still be you know a volt or two off depending on once we get the tube hooked up but uh, we should be in the ballpark so let's get the HOT reinstalled and then uh, I mean we can just try it if the because the HOT reads okay so knowing our power supply is good and our B plus is set properly the only thing that would keep this from turning on would be a faulty flyback or a faulty HOT in theory. Um, uh, there is one capacitor that is slightly bulging and that's this one here. Right here. That one is slightly bulging as you can see. But our this is part of the power supply and the power supply is functional. So I'm not really too worried about that. We'll have to cap this but just to see if it works. I don't think that'll keep it from working because our power supply was working. So. Um, I'm not sure what's up with this 
yoke jumper. Never seen anything like that before. But not needed where I'm going uh, for my testing. So the pot is, now nah, the pot's about 70%. I turned it from 75 to about 70. And I'm talking like zero and then 100. So didn't have to tweak it too much, but uh, we got a vertical linearity, sub-vertical size, um, x-ray protection, not gonna mess with that. That could be set in properly as well, but uh, I'm not gonna mess with it. We'll just see if it works the way that it is. And then now uh, we have a horizontal hold and a horizontal position, a uh, sub-horizontal position. So, uh, okay, so let's get the HOT back in and then uh, uh, I guess we'll just hook it up. So I'm gonna cut away, get the HOT back in, when I come back, I'll have it on a picture tube, and then we'll just turn it on and see if it works, because, I don't know, I was told, let's see what, let me narrate here what the actual message says, just so we can all be sure. Okay. Uh, hi, Mike, I saw your Neotech video. I'm having trouble with mine. It's not showing an image. Uh, duh, duh, duh. I can hear the game boot up, but no image on the screen. I do not have neck glow. It is not ticking, it's dead. So, I mean, it's not uh, dead from my testing. So I'm gonna get the HOT back in and get it on a tube. We'll come back and I'll flip it on and we'll see if it actually works. Okay, so the HOT is reinstalled. I have the chassis on a U5000 tube. This is the tube I test all this, all this stuff on. It's completely compatible and should work just fine for the quick testing we need to do. I've got uh, anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, remote but no video hooked up because this has one of these uh, kind of proprietary video cables here. I don't have a, a right connector to feed a video signal, but for now we're just gonna turn it on and see if it actually works. If it turns on, if we get high voltage, if we get net glow, then we'll cut away and try to figure out how to give it a video signal. But for now, we're just checking to make sure it turns on and operates. So that being said, here we go. Uh, one, two, three. Came right on, and it's working. Let's turn the light off here, make sure we get actual net glow. And uh, I hear, well, it is running. You can hear it running, but so far, there's nothing. When I say nothing, I mean I can hear it running. It had high voltage, we just heard it energize. You can hear it running, but yeah, I indeed, do not appear to have neck glow. Let's turn up our flyback here. Oh, we do get something. Hmm, so it is operating. But I don't see really anything. Let me close my blinds. Here. Hang on one second. Uno Momento, amateur channel at its best. Uh, yeah, we've got pretty much zero neck glow, but that could be because there's no video signal. I mean, there's nothing. The f we do see something on the screen. It's almost non-existent. But yeah, you can see the blue. So we do have an image, but the neck glow is zero. <laughs> so. Let me cut away here and give it a video signal. See if maybe it's just because there's no video signal. Sometimes that kind of thing happens. So let me get that done, see if that makes any difference. All right, so I had to depin my normal Neotech connector here. I used my uh, amp extractor here, Molex extractor, whatever you want to refer to it as, and I took the pins out of the normal Neotech connector here, and I just had to stick them on here for this one. So. We're all set up for RGB. Uh, let's, we're on standard res, turn that on. Let's, let's see if uh, giving it a video signal makes any difference here. One, two, three. And it sounds like it has sync problems here. But uh, no, it doesn't appear to be any different. Let's turn up flyback. Nope. Look at that, exact same issue with a signal or no signal. Same problem. It almost sounds like it has hold problems. 
Well, that's not good. Hmm. Now, before we kill it, let's uh, turn it off. So that ticking noise uh, could be something from the neck socket or it could be from the flyback. Further investigation is warranted. I think what we'll do is let's just cap it, reflow it, because that's not, all that needs to be done anyway, especially with that bulging cap and the power supply. So we'll cap it, reflow it, see if our situation has improved at all. If not, I think I may have to throw a different flyback in just for testing purposes, because that, that uh, I don't know how to, that issue we just saw with the, the ticking noise and the, the screen going crazy, that's indicative of a problem with the neck socket or the flyback. So yeah, let's just uh, do the cap kit reflow and see where we're at from there and proceed and find out if that does anything. If not, we'll go further here. So let's find out. All right, so about two hours later, I finally got everything done. Full cap kit, reflow, inspection, everything. And in the inspection, while doing the cap kit, I actually found something critical to the operation of this chassis that's not or damaged or it's not correct so we'll get to that in a moment but through my troubleshooting process I thought I had a faulty uh, RGB encoder chip so in the past I've had a very similar issue to this and it turns out that it was the RGB encoder chip that was faulty that was not allowing an image to be produced so I went to that and thought okay well maybe that's the issue so if you notice here uh, I'll go to ground and my ground pin should be this one there there it is there it is okay so now there's our ground. If I go to, there are three pins that are reading 33 ohms short to ground. You got uh, one, there's 33 ohms to ground. Two, 33 ohms to ground. And three, 33 ohms to ground. So you think, okay, that's a problem. You don't wanna have any of those pins reading to ground. Well, they're not reading to ground, they're reading 33 ohms through, th there's three resistors here. So I thought, based off previous experience, that that chip was faulty. So I took it out, put a socket in, and put a replacement in, and lo and behold, I still had 33 ohms to ground on those three pins. So I took the new chip out, left the old chip out, and so it was just an exposed socket, and went to those three pins, and they still read 33 ohms to ground. Well, it turns out that there's three resistors here. Uh, this one... This one here, this one here, and this one here. The ones with the black bands. There's a black band, black band, black band. Those three resistors out of circuit are 33 ohms. So it turns out that those readings I was getting were perfectly normal for this chip because you get three resistors here that are 33 ohms, a pathway to ground, which is why I'm getting those. So this was not the problem. So I put the original chip back in and that wasn't the issue. The only thing that I found while recapping this is we had the one cap here that was bulging and I replaced it, of course, along with all the rest of them. Uh, n none of the other ones showed any visual signs of leakage uh, or, or bulging except just that one cap. So the full cap kit's been installed, but the one thing that I found was there is an inductor over here, L301. And again, this is why inspection is vital when you're working on these things, is that if we look at L301, not only is it not sitting flat, but there's corrosion on, let's see if I can get a better shot here. There is corrosion on the leg, what's right here. And it's not just the corrosion, the whole thing is lifted out. See this? So that inductor is faulty the line is broken. I don't know if you can even see there, right, right on the edge there. Underneath here is a piece of wire. You can kind of see the bulge there of the wire. That wire connects to right here and it's broken. So the problem I have is I have to f either figure out a way to fix this. The only thing that, the, all this is is just a support leg. That's all this is, this corroded piece is just a leg. The important part is to get this wire re-soldered to the circuit. So the only option I have is to try and scrape this away and re-solder it to the leg or just replace it. I had a, a spare, I don't have any spare S500 chassis. I do have a couple of spare uh, 2515Cs, but they don't have this inductor. 
So I went looking through my parts stash and found an old Mac Vision that had an inductor. Let's zoom out here. I got this inductor from an old Mac Vision. The problem is I don't have any idea what the rating of is of this inductor. This one is a hundred micro or ten micro Henry. Ten micro Henry. I don't know if you can see that. Ten UH ten micro Henry. I have no idea what this one is. I'm only hoping that it says it on the on the case because there's no schematic that I can find for the S500. So I have two options here. Replace it with this one and see if it works or try and fix this one. But that's probably may not be the cause of our problem, but it's a contributing factor because this is connected directly to the x-ray circuit. So I gotta see if maybe I can create some type of Because right now, if we were to go to L301 on the bottom side here and just read across it, uh, L301 is right here. And if we zoom out a bit and we go to ohms and I go across L301, it's open. So that should be, it's a coil. So it should be zero ohms. And we don't, we have in the 2K range. So it's definitely bad. The problem is I, I have to be able to try and f I have to either fix this or see if I can install this other one and I don't know how this happened I mean over time this is not something that somebody broke because the legs all corroded the leg corroded and it, and it the wire broke, just like uh, you got the occasional transformer on the Hanner X 900 MTC 900. The horizontal output transistor likes to corrode and die as well. Maybe I can perform a miracle here. So I'm just scraping off the coating for this, exposing the wire to see if maybe I can, like I say, perform some type of miracle. And it's exposed. I just wonder if I'll be able to solder anything to it. Let's grab a little flux. See if I can tin this. If I can tin this, then we might be in luck here. Yep. That is completely why I didn't just try to use the soldering iron before. I don't know, but Okay, well, now I don't know if I just made it worse or not. Okay, there we go. That now that now this is loose. This wire is loose now out of that burned plastic. So now I can see if I can solder something to it. I wonder if I should just remove this and make life easier on myself, but I don't know. I don't want to make it worse than it is. Yeah, there you go. 
so all right i wonder who wrote the book of love nope i don't wonder that let's grab this here and see if we can this damn thing is in the way let's see if we can uh... can I tin that Throw a little flux on there, see what that does. Uh, got a little life in it. Let's see if we can. Uh, okay. I got this magnet wire from pinball coil and we'll try and wrap this around that leg first I have to scrape the coating off this is not a this isn't a coating that you can just use a soldering iron to scrape away you have to manually scrape this off here so okay so can I just solder this directly to that leg that would be ideal nope this is uh This is not ideal. But it worked. We're successfully soldered onto that leg. Now we have to figure out how we're going to fix this now. We'll open that back up. Untangle all this mess. And see about getting this back in here. if we can work some type of miracle here. Stay there, you. Right like that. Stay right like that. Don't move. No, that did not work. What I need to do is try that. Oh, you rat bastard.
I just need to support this like this and then slide that wire in there to act as a bridge I think we got it boys and girls I think we got it it is not pretty in any way shape or form but I think we got it let's solder the other side back in Now the true test is going to be, do we have continuity across it now? 1.5 and falling from the heat, ha ha, ha ha, 1.2, 1. Point, come on, 1.1. I'm going to call it a success. Now, what I need to do, that it is good to go. I mean, it looks terrible, but that's not what's important. What's important is that it works. So we're going to grab the hot glue gun, and we're going to apply a liberal amount of hot glue. So I'm going to pause for a moment and come back when this is warmed up. And then we're going to apply a little hot glue to this thing and test it out. All right, we're sufficiently warm here, so let's try and perform a little magic. And what I want to do here is just some so this doesn't move. That's all I'm interested in. I think that should do it. Yep, I think that should do it. That'll keep it from vibration and things like that. I think that'll work. So now we're going to give it time to cool down and solidify. Uh, but I won't bore you with that, so I'm going to get this back on the picture tube and we'll cross our fingers if a cap kit, a reflow, and fixing L103 solved our problem. Okay, everything's hooked back up, uh, including this little cable I had disconnected here when I was gluing that L301 back in place. I didn't show it being hooked back up before I cut away, but it's hooked back up, don't worry now. Uh, and everything else is hooked up. We got our anode neck yoke ground power video remote. Uh, let's turn on our TPG and see if we are in any better position than we were before. Uh, obviously we should be because we had that bulging cap and L301 was out of the circuit. But uh, yeah, let's see if it works now, and or at least it still works. Let's see if our heater glow is any better. Or, uh, things like that. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay, it comes on. And nothing has exploded yet. What do we get? Nothing yet. Oh, hey. 
Man, that takes a long time. This tube is good, too. All right, well, uh, looks like we need to adjust vertical hold. Hey, locked right on. Okay, we're terribly out of focus. Looks like our picture is fairly, fairly square, though. Um, I can't believe that, you know, we lucked out and it's it's not backwards or upside down. <laughs> it's just a 50-50 shot on the two connectors, so that's uh, fortunate. Like, not a big deal. You can just swap them around. But um, focus. Let's see if focus is. Oh, hey, that is crisp. We're pretty dim though. That is awful dim in person. That's like super, super dim. And if we turn our brightness down. Because uh, it's too bright right now. There you go. If I turn it down to where it should be right there, that is super dim. What's RGB look? Oh my lord, that is terrible. That is terrible. This tube is good. That looks like garbage. All the color pots, those are centered and the ones on the side are centered. That looks like absolute garbage. If I turn up the red, It's a little better, I guess, but let's put it back to the center and just turn up contrast. Uh, well, a little better. It starts bleeding right there, right there. Uh, what does our heater voltage look like? Let's zoom in on the heater and let's kill the light. Okay, hang on. There's the heater. Let's turn our light off. Oh man, there's no heater voltage at all. No wonder this is so dim. You can't even see it. What in tarnation? It's working. But, oh, it's just so dim. I wonder... The brightness... Hang on. The brightness is right where it needs to be. If I turn up the flyback... Oh, nope. Got to come down to right there. So brightness is right where it needs to be. Screen pot's right where it needs to be. And that just looks like crap. The tube is fantastic, so it's not the tube. And we have no neck glow. We have neck glow, but you can't even see it. I wonder if that flyback is just like on its last leg because it should the heater circuit should be much more pronounced than that. That's almost nothing. Hmm. I think for the sake of testing purposes, I'm gonna put in, I got a new, another uh, 252, the MCT-252, whatever, MRFT, MCFT, whatever it is, dash 252, because that's what's in here. I'm gonna, as a matter of fact, let's, uh, that's a 216, here we go. MRCFT-252. Let me throw one of these in here. I'm just curious to see if it improves our brightness and or neck glow because this is abysmal i'm telling you and even the the tpg also puts out a higher output than a standard pcb as a matter of fact i have russell fist here let's see if i can swap this out let's turn this off and see if i can plug this in here i have the jumper on it already from a previous repair attempt And yeah, it's, man, that is just garbage. Let's turn our contrast down slightly. And our brightness is still too high right there. Oh man, that is terrible. I'm sure I could tweak some colors here to uh, get it a bit better, but Turning the red does almost nothing. That's what the red all the way up, and that's what it all the way down. So I mean, all the way up, green all the way up. Nope, that's way too much. Blue is too much already. So right there is about somewhat color balanced, and that's just terrible. Well, I'm gonna change out that flyback just see if it makes any difference, and I'll come right back. Okay, so the new flyback is installed, the old flyback is right here, and unfortunately it didn't really make much of a difference. 
So I had mentioned I knew it wasn't the tube. I, I was adamant that it wasn't the tube. Uh, that's my test tube that I test everything with, and the reason it was the test tube was because it originally was a very dim picture, and I rejuvenated it and brought it back to life. But over the over the you know last couple of years I've been doing these videos, uh, it slowly started to go back to being dull. However, every other chassis I test it with, it looks fantastic. It looks great, but for some reason it just didn't like this that tube. I should say this chassis did not like that tube. So I went and grabbed a K7400 tube. And so after doing that, hooking it up to the K7400 tube, it looks a million times better. Look at how much better that is. It's just amazing. So it turns out that I was wrong. It was the tube. The tube was just dull compared to what this is wanting to put out. I mean, I don't know if the colors are just a little bit slightly muted on this chassis compared to like, let's say a K7000 or K7400. Because when I test those chassis on that U5000 tube, it looks fine. It looks just like this. So that's why I was very adamant that it wasn't the tube. But with the K7400 tube, uh, it looks amazing. If we go to the RGB with this tube, look, <laughs> it's just an absolute night and day difference. But you can see, ironically, this came out of a Ms. Pac-Man Gallagher reunion, uh, just like this one did. However, this was a K7400, so, uh, and you can see here, 20k, uh, 2574, 25 inch 7400. So, but yeah, a night and day difference. So, uh, I condemned this flyback when it wasn't the cause. However, I'm just going to go ahead and keep this one in here because there's no reason to not leave the new one in there. Uh, and I'll return this to the owner so he has this as a spare in case something does happen to this one. But I'll run the burn in test, make sure nothing explodes or gets hot or bubbles or boils. And I'll go ahead and just return this to the owner of this. And, uh, but yeah, so this is now completely fixed. There was nothing wrong with it as far as the, the weak dim image. It was just the tube I was using to test with. Now, I'm just curious now, as I say this, I wonder what our, I wonder what our heater looks like. Let me focus in on here and then uh, shut the light off. And not, not much different. Let's give it time to, adjust but nope not really I mean I can't even see the heater hardly at all right there maybe I don't know either way uh, not much different but the picture is gorgeous oh I must have hit the button here yeah amazing absolutely amazing so I guess yeah it was the tube so Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and turn this off and just see how it looks with an actual board like last time. Can I do this here one-handed without it getting upset at me? Um, yep. Wow. Amazing. Let's, uh, let's H phase this sucker back over. Uh, there we go, and H size this sucker out. Nice, turn the contrast down slightly. There we go. Outstanding. So yeah, uh, let's go over this. So what did we have? We simply had uh, L301 was broken, and we had a bulging cap. Other than that, nothing was wrong with this on my end. So I don't know what's wrong on the owner's end as to why it wasn't working for them. They'll have to go through, make sure their cabinet fuse is good, make sure they're getting 100 and you know, 110 volts to the uh, the input to the chassis. But as far as it as it's concerned on my end, it worked just fine out of the box. Just had a bulging cap and a uh, broken L301. So after getting it on a tube that's good, uh, it looks and works great. So I'll get this uh, burned in, make sure nothing explodes. Uh, barring any unforeseen circumstance, uh, we'll call this repaired. So again, thanks for watching. Like I always say, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.